Ukraine has been drilling its military after the reported build-up of Russian forces near its border. US intelligence says 175,000 Russian troops are moving to the area with an invasion possible as soon as January. Ukraine has built up its firepower since the Russian invasion in 2014, but also wants more support from the West. <laughs> President Biden has promised to make it, quotes, very, very difficult for President Putin to go ahead with any attack, but it's not clear how he's going to do that. Russia denies aggressive intentions. It wants assurances that Ukraine will not be allowed to join NATO, but that's a demand the West is unlikely to accept. The Russians today said relations with the US were, quotes, in a lamentable state. On that, at least, the two presidents will probably agree. Relations with the European members of NATO have at least improved from the Trump era. But Biden will need them to back a tougher line over Ukraine if any threat of sanctions is going to work. This showdown takes place in the shadow of the Afghan withdrawal. At the time, critics warned the chaos in Kabul would embolden America's rivals because it showed that the US would not stick by its allies. And that will be important to another confrontation looming 5,000 miles from Ukraine in Taiwan, with the US also concerned about a build-up of Chinese forces, saying they too look like a rehearsal for military action. So, earlier I spoke to the new US ambassador to NATO, Julianne Smith, and I started by asking her how tomorrow's phone call between Presidents Biden and Putin is likely to go. The United States is very concerned about what we're seeing, the buildup, the massing of forces on Ukraine's border. And we're quite concerned that Russia is preparing for some sort of very aggressive action against Ukraine. What no doubt the president will do is to warn President Putin about the high impact economic consequences that Russia will face if it decides to take action. Forces massing on the border, as you put it, I mean, is it as dangerous as it looks? I believe it is a very troubling situation, which is why it was so important that NATO allies sat around the table just a couple of days ago in Riga. It was fortunate and symbolic that the allies were actually able to sit down in Latvia, share an assessment of the situation, share intelligence, and talk about what steps they might take should Russia opt to move into Ukraine. But Russia feels it's the one being threatened by even the possibility that Ukraine might join later. Well, I think Russia has made several accusations about the NATO alliance uh, that are unfounded. Russia has complained that NATO is encircling it. Nothing could be further from the truth. NATO is a defensive alliance, and its door remains open. The decision on whether or not it would add future members is a decision that will be taken by the 30 members of the alliance and the country in question. Russia does does not have a veto over that type of decision. Do you think that how we deal with this crisis over Ukraine will be a signal as to how we deal with the crisis over Taiwan, for example? Well, I think what's important is that we focus on this particular situation between Russia and Ukraine. I think the NATO allies are very focused on what's happening just on Ukraine's border, and we need not have other discussions about other corners of the world right now. Does the potential of reaching some kind of reduction of tension exist in this phone call tomorrow? I think, yes, we want to try and seize on this opportunity of engagement at the highest levels between President Biden and President Putin and hope that we can de-escalate this situation. But given that Putin has moved this vast number of troops into this arena, that can't really be a great hope, can it? Well, we'll have to see what happens tomorrow. But essentially, we have a situation where we need Russia to adhere to the ceasefire from July of last year, pull back its troops, 
and take, assume a peacetime posture on the border with Ukraine. But don't get me wrong. I mean, we are concerned, deeply concerned about the intelligence that we're seeing. I can't go into the detail, but I can tell you that we are worried about the efforts that they are undertaking to destabilize Ukraine internally from within. And we're also very worried about this large scale buildup right on the border. Ambassador Julianne Smith, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. Thank you.